Hello, welcome back. This is my G-Made Komodo GSO2F, and this is a handmade pottery cup from Uig in Sky. I love Sky. Love Talisker whiskey as well. Anyway, honesty is important. Perhaps some context is needed. Right. I have had problems with my G-Made Komodo GSO2F. I had the predecessor, the G-Made Komodo GSO2, and I loved it. Loved that truck, it was my favourite RC truck, and I would wholeheartedly recommend that truck to anybody. Not just the Komodo Double Cab, but the GSO2, G-Made GSO2 platform. If you're in the, in the market for a reasonably budget uh, rock crawler trail truck, go ahead, it's awesome. No qualms about saying that. But I had issues with this. Now, I want to start the video off by saying that for me, being honest, transparent, and having integrity is the most important thing when it comes to reviewing a product. Now, that sounds obvious, but that's not always the case. I want to make it clear that when I first started an RC YouTube channel, obviously I wanted it to be successful. One of my goals was to have it grow to the point where hopefully it would be big enough that it could start to sort of, in some way, pay for the hobby, pay for my repairs, pay for investing in new kits, all the rest of it, and maybe even become big enough to the part that I could be offered stuff to review. Now, obviously that has not happened. I've been doing this for years. I have less than 4,000 subscribers. I don't know how to get the YouTube algorithm working for me. It, it hasn't happened. So that, that failed on that part. Another um, goal of mine when it came to the YouTube channel was that I can connect with people around the world and share common ground and, and, and co converse with them and make some sort of bond, even though it's across the internet. And that has absolutely happened. Some of the people I've been speaking to, and some of the people who have reached out, some people have helped me, some people have sent me stuff. Um, you guys are all awesome. I wouldn't change it for the world. Thank you very much for that. But the third thing, possibly the most important thing is, I wanted this to be a YouTube channel where people go, yes, that guy is trustworthy. And that meant that my opinion was always my own, was always utterly genuine and utterly truthful, and was never for sale, ever. Now, this also means if I'm ever, I mean, it's not, it's not gonna happen um, from the RC space, I don't think, because I, like I say, I, I'm too small and I don't know how to get this thing to work, so, whatever. But um, if I was ever sent an RC product to review, I would make it abundantly clear to the manufacturer or whoever's sending it that I will review it honestly. And that my, my, my conclusion may not be to your liking because I owe it to the viewers to be truthful. Now that has actually happened before once but not for RC. I do this other thing called something different on this channel where I'll dabble in other hobbies that are sort of similar in some ways, maybe they're practical or whatever, but they're not based on RC. One of the things I did was a U-Gears Grand Prix car, a wooden self-assembly kit model thing. I did that. I had so many thousand views. It was quite successful in terms of this channel anyway. Um, somebody reached out via email and said they have a Kickstarter. This is all true. I'll put, I'll put the screenshots up so you can see. They have a Kickstarter forming and they're making a board game, a multiplayer board game that incorporates this wooden kit building aspect. And they described it on the email. It sounded really fascinating, actually. It's something I'd be right into trying. It sounded really good, really good fun. And I think some of, some of you people, or a lot of you people watching this would be into that sort of thing as well. Um, so I said, yes, absolutely, I'd be happy. They, they said, look, we can send you a review copy. Um, would you like to review, etc. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, yes, absolutely. I'd love to. I'm honoured. Thank you for the offer. But, and you can see this for yourself, I said, and I stressed, for, I stressed to them that my opinion is not for sale. My opinions are my own. I owe it to my viewers to be as honest and truthful as possible. I will never sell out. I will never shill. And my integrity is worth more than the money, essentially. Right, fine. As a result of that, I never got a response. Now, it could be that they sent that email to thousands of other people and, you know, they just decided to go with bigger channels or whatever. But it could be that that email cut the chances for me. I don't know. 
I don't care. That's the reality. So why am I bringing all this up? Well, it's very easy to be honest if you're right about things. And that's fair enough. But to be honest and trustworthy, you also need to admit when you're wrong. I've been struggling with this truck. I made some videos saying that I had a really weird gearbox issue. And it was making a horrible noise when under load. But you pick it up off the ground and it would run normally. The gearbox sounded smooth, sounded quiet, didn't sound like it was falling to pieces. As soon as you introduced load, wouldn't go anywhere, especially if you blocked it slightly. So say for example, I wanted it to climb over my arm. Um, if there was no resistance, it would move along the table quite quite nicely. But as soon as you put your arm in the way, it would it would make it. It would just make this horrible noise. Now I rebuilt this gearbox several times. There was no damage at all. I think I must have rebuilt it six times. No damage at all. Um, there was another issue, which I thought was the same issue, but on a crawl, what sounded like the same sort of noise, very similar noise, wasn't the same noise. What is that noise? Back axle's turning, front one isn't. And then it grabs again. What threw me was sometimes the drive was getting out of the gearbox and spinning the drive shafts. And then the drive would stop. So we knew, for example, that the problem was in the front, say differential, the front axle. Because the drive shaft would spin, there'd be a horrible noise, but you get no more forward momentum. Okay, fair enough. That's where the problem is. Sometimes the drive would not exit. The drive shafts were not spinning. They would sort of rumble. They wouldn't spin. So the drive was being lost somewhere in the gearbox. So I looked and looked and looked, couldn't find it. I found the issue with the front axle. It was the bevel gears were worn away. In fact, there was teeth missing. In fact, it was also worn on the back axle. In fact, the bearings here and here had both collapsed completely. The bearings were shot. They, they came out in pieces. My conclusion was there's something up with the two speed because the two speed on this is not smooth. The two speed on the GSO2F platform is not smooth. You have a cam with a lot of space to move back and forward. It slides back and locks into this, this drive gear and then it slides this way and locks into this drive gear for high and low. Now, it is a lot of space to move back and forward. It doesn't, it's not completely uh, the very tight tolerances. That's really, really, that's a really poor sentence. Grammatically, that was terrible. Anyway, um, there's a lot of, a lot of, slop in it so when it moves in there's a sudden slamming of the gears a sudden slamming from firsts or from from low slamming into high it's not smooth right what makes it worse is the car or the truck has to be moving ever so slightly in order to change gear because otherwise you may it may slot in but the chances are it won't be lined up properly unless you're moving so it'll when you're moving it'll click click in and then it'll drive Whereas if it's not moving, it may slot in, but it may just bounce off and not do it properly. You, you were, I was hearing stories of people, this didn't happen to myself, where it'd be on a slope and then it would just roll backwards all of a sudden because it'd fallen out of gear. Now, it's a poor two-speed. I really like G-Made, I really like this truck, but it's a poor two-speed. It slams into gear way too violently. My theory on that video, and I still stick by it, is that the two speed caused the issues with the bevel gears and the bearings because you're all of a sudden introducing much higher loads when you go from low gear to high gear, especially on the front, which is not only heavier, but also it has overdrive. So there's more uh, pressure, more, uh, what's the word? Um, um, mine's gone blank. more load, more load on the front axle. So, especially that, that's why that one was more damaged than the back. They were both damaged. 
You combine that with the fact that yes, okay, this truck is heavier than it was standard. I have SSD knuckle weights. I've got steel um, uh, links. I've got steel steering links. Um, I've got heavier wheels, beadlock wheels. But first of all, these are very common upgrades that most people who are serious about trail trucks will do. Secondly, these exact knuckle weights, these exact wheels, and these exact links were on my old GSO2 with no issues. What's the difference between the GSO2 and the GSO2F? This one has overdrive, that one doesn't. This one has the two speed, that one doesn't. So it was probably either or. My money was on the two speed because of the slamming back and support. That was the conclusion I reached and, and actually I stick by it. So I replaced the bevel gears. Now, I took it out and it still didn't work. That original noise was still happening. Um, it was almost like a slipper clutch issue. It didn't sound like a slipper clutch, but it acted like one in that you could give it throttle and it would just but it would eventually build up a bit of momentum and go off like it was slipping. So I replaced the slipper pads just in case. No difference. No difference. So the bevel gears were repaired, they were replaced. I actually took them out of the old axles from the old trucks. Like I said, the old truck, I put it through hell for two years. They were fine. So I put the, the bevel gears from the old axles into these axles, worked, worked absolutely fine. But I was still losing drive. What was it? Here you go. There it is. And this is where the honesty comes in. It was my fault. I did it wrong. In the instruction manual, in the gearbox, there are several plastic bushings, donut shaped, like that. They're all the same size. They're all the same part number. But one of them is ever so slightly different. One of them has a small lip on one side. I didn't notice. It goes on the longest shaft in the entire gearbox. It goes right here from the front where the spur and the motor is, all the way back here. The shaft I broke while trying to tighten up the gearbox, trying to tighten up the slipper. That's a whole different thing. I think that one was a bit dodgy. But it goes on there. It's supposed to have the one with the lip on it. The one with a slight shoulder on the inside. I didn't notice. They're all the same size. They're all the same width. They're all the same color. They're all the same outer diameter. They're all the same inner diameter. They're all the same part number. They're on a parts tree. But I put this one in. I should have put the other one in. There's like five or six of these. Only four of them are needed, so they're spares. There's only one of the one that should be. What is the result of putting that one in rather than the right one with a small shoulder on it? Nothing, nothing happens at all. It works perfectly fine for a little while. This large E-clip goes on the end of the shaft, holds this plastic bushing in place. Nothing happens. Just means there's a little bit of play, tiny amount, on the gear, on the cog. Doesn't really do anything. The problem is that moves. As it moves, it wears this, especially when the two speed kicks in because you're putting sudden load and you're suddenly shunting it. That movement gets worse as it wears. Eventually, the little pin, drive pin, that's in the back of that gear, the gear moves enough that the drive pin pops out just a little bit. Therefore, this gear is no longer spinning the rest of the shaft. It's, it's just grabbing and no more, so it sort of kicks in and kicks out, which is where you get the noise, which is where you get the loss of drive, and it comes in and comes out. It's also why when you strip the gearbox, there's nothing broken and nothing wrong. So you reassemble it. It still doesn't work. I should have noticed, because yes, they're the same part number, but you need to be careful here. One of them has a number three next to it, I think that one was a number one next to it. 
I missed it. That was my fault. Once you put the correct one in, there's no play left on that shaft. It's tight as a drum. There's no more lost drive. The truck's fine. Now, it's all my fault. Is this all completely flawless then? No. I repaired that. Replaced it with the proper one. Put it in. Got the gearbox running. Went out for a crawl. Just in the back garden with Matthew, my brother-in-law, just to make sure it works. A familiar sound happened. Bevel gear in the front. Gone again. Now what the mistake I made meant there's a loss of drive here. It meant this doesn't turn. So it doesn't load up the bevel gear. My mistake is completely innocent when it comes to the state of this. Not the cause. It still might be my fault though, because when I took the bevel gears out of my old axles to replace them, I replaced the two big bevel gears, not the two small ones. The two small ones might have been worn as well. They looked perfect and they felt perfect, but it could be I used a slightly worn one against a slightly different worn one, whatever. It could be my fault. Since then, I bought brand new bevel gears for the front axle. They feel really good. They feel much tighter. I've been rock crawling twice and I've had no issues at all. Now, I have to apologize to everybody. There's a car going past, but also I have to apologize to everybody because I messed up. This was my mistake. I missed a small but very key uh, step in the instructions. And um, the result of it has been months and months and months of trying to work out why, because as I said, every time you took the gearbox to pieces, nothing's wrong. It's in perfect condition, no snap teeth, no snap pins, nothing. And yet it wouldn't work. But my other videos aren't a write-off because there is still a weakness in this truck and it is the two-speed and the bevel gears. All the cogs in the gearbox are hard and steel. These in here, just put myself in the nose with the uh, battery cable, these are sintered steel. Not high quality hardened steel, sintered steel. Cheap and weaker. Possibly okay without the two-speed. You see I've removed, there's no servo there now. Possibly. But when mine failed here, the teeth came off the bevel gears, the bearings collapsed. When that happened, this wasn't worn. I still had drive going through the gearbox. They failed because of normal use, not because of what I did. So really G may need to do two things. They need to address the shunting, the violent shunting of the two speed. Unless you as an owner can be super careful go as slow as the crawl will allow and snick it into gear. It'll still be a bit shunty, but you know, be careful. Secondly, if you, especially, if you've, especially if you've got it in high gear, don't just release the throttle. You release the throttle, the whole thing endos because the drive suddenly stops. Don't do that. Gradually release the throttle. Let it coast down a bit. G-Made should also, should release HD, high carbon steel, um, hardened steel bevel gears for the axles. They should. They don't, but they should. So is it worth buying? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Absolutely buy the G-Made GSO2F. But be aware of the potential flaws. I genuinely believe if you have the overdrive and you have the two speed, you may be one of the lucky ones. 
the two speed has a bit of adjustment, you can make it better. Furthermore, when I assembled this front axle, brand new, I mean, when it was brand new, it did not feel as nice as the same front axle, it's the same axle as on my last kit, the GSO2, did not feel as nice because there's obviously natural differences in the tolerances of things in the manufacturing process. That one felt notchy is too strong a word, but rumbly isn't strong enough. It felt somewhere in between. The other one was nice. The other one lasted, this one didn't. The other one, the bearings were fine. This one, they collapsed. When I assembled it recently, again, same axle, but with a brand new pair of bevel, bevel gears in there, it felt oh so good. Maybe a little natural difference in the manufacturer made all the difference. And maybe we, even with the two speed, the gears I've got in now, which feel really smooth, will be perfect. However, I firmly believe if you want to guarantee, maybe guarantee is too strong, but if you want to try and, 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 and keep your, your GSO2F going for longer, I would strongly suggest you buy it without thinking of two speed. Two speed's a gimmick when it comes to a trail truck anyway. What does it actually do? Oh, it can go jogging pace, a big deal, right? As far as I'm concerned, get rid of two speed, keep the overdrive, you should be fine. Hopefully I'll be fine. Now look, I know there are other trucks on the market that from the box have a perfectly working two-speed. So you might say to yourself, why don't I buy that instead? That's a good point. But ask yourself this, how many trucks for this price point have got fenders? Really nice forward weight distribution. Really bulletproof gearbox when it's built right. Torque twist reduction transmission. Now, sure, the FTX, what's it called? Texan has those. They accept it's an FT FTX and the quality of the materials is not great. This has a one of the best receiver boxes on the market. Completely waterproof, nice and spacious. This, I can tell you from experience, is an incredible trail truck, even without the two-speed. One other thing to consider, Yes, I stripped these for a second time after the two speed was removed. But bear in mind, obviously, those were used bevel gears. The bigger one was from my other truck, my old truck. The smaller one was from this truck. They were unevenly worn. Put them together, that could have been the cause for the second premature failure of the bevel gears. The first one, I'm certain, comes from the Shanti two speed. Something else to consider. This is the G made Komodo double cap, right? These, the G made MT1904 tires. The Komodo double cap doesn't come with 1904s, it comes with 1903s. And the reason it doesn't come with 1904s is these are too big for the arches. The bomb, same chassis, the bomb comes with these tires because it has the arch clearance to fit these tires. This truck doesn't. The G Make Motor Double Cab doesn't. Where is it? I don't have it to hand. Anyway, I had to trim those arches, but they were still catching. Now you think about it, you turn the wheel, big chunky tire, lots of grip, lots of grooves, lots of tread. That catches in the arch. You're trying to climb, come on, climb that rock. It's already under load. You've got force coming out of this big motor, force going through the gearbox, force going through the drive shaft. They're trying to spin the bevel gear. The bevel gear can't spin because the tire is bound up against the inner arch and it's a thick body shell. It's not like a little flimsy one that'll just flap out like a Tamiya, um, like my King Yellow, for example. That would rip through the King Yellow shell. It's jammed up against the shell. You're trying to make it drive forward. Something has to give. The body shell could be innocent. It could have nothing to do with that. But it might. You know, you've got the combination of worn bevel gears that are mismatched, essentially. You've got the tires catching on the shell, unable to turn. And obviously it's overdrive as well, so that's even more load. Lots of coulds, lots of maybes, lots of mites, lots of perhaps. But here's a concrete fact for you. This is a really good trail truck. It's got a shoddy two-speed system that may 
or may not be the cause of many failures. It's not going to help. However, sack that off and you've got a really, really solid performing trail truck. And this, as a rock crawler, has been great. Really good. Yes, these are centered steel bevel gears. Yes, it would be nicer if these were also uh, high carbon steel gears. However, these are exactly the same gears that are in the GSO2, the original GSO2. And my GSO2 ran flawlessly for two years until I replaced it and it was put through hell at the same tires on it, which were catching the arches in the same way. I had the same wheels, I had the same SSD knuckle weights. It basically, it wasn't quite as heavy because it was a heavier car overall because of the gearbox. Essentially, it weighed the same, at the same motor, literally the same motor, I've lifted it out. The same ESC, the same wheels, same tires, same everything. And it survived, despite those centered gears. So, I'm very loath to say that those are the problem. The problem was, I initially built it wrong. And I also genuinely believe that the two-speed is flawed. But don't let that put you off. Because who buys a trail truck because of two-speed? Maybe buy a, tra a trail truck because of, you know, portal axles. Personally, I don't really care for portal axles because they raise the center of gravity too much. But that's up to that's up to you as a buyer. I don't think anybody's turned a superior trail truck away for one that isn't as good because this one has two speed. This one doesn't. If I was to give a recommendation, and again, I hope this has come from a place that you can trust. I would say, give this truck a look, but consider sacking off that two speed. It's an awesome truck. And I go rock crawling quite regularly with Matthew and his uh, Element Enduro, which is a very highly regarded truck. And um, okay, the tires are slightly different because he's using uh, Pro Chines and uh, I'm using genuine G-Mades. But uh, right now this is winning. So <laughs> that's all I could say. Right, I'm happy to put that to bed, to be honest. Uh, I will keep you all updated. Now that I've got the nice new gears in it, now that I've sorted the, the gearbox, now that I've got rid of the two speed, um, and I also do not release the throttle, like I say, to make it end all of a sudden. That was fun to watch for a while, but just knowing what you're putting, the shock you're putting through the drivetrain, I'm like, mm, no thank you. I will keep you updated, and if this suffers another premature failure, you will hear about it. <laughs> and therefore I might, have to relook at this. But I'm not expecting that. Because there's nothing drivetrain wise now, apart from the overdrive, that this is now subject to that my old truck wasn't. And the old truck was perfect. And this one climbs so much better. Although the old one's still really good actually. If you're looking for a for a you know mid-tier GSO2, uh, sorry, if you're looking for a mid-tier trail truck. Yes, things like the FTX Outback Texan make the GSO2 look less value for money because the Texan just boasts loads of features for what they... Don't bother. That's not as good a truck. Anyway, there we are. Thank you for watching. And again, I do apologise for the mistake I made. That I'm owning up to. That was on me. The gearbox is perfect. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. I'll see you later. Bye.